So we'll talk about Srila Prabhupada in the second half of this our session. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll start with Mangala Charan prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksuraon Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupaha Kadamahiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeham Sri Guru Sri Yutapada Kamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavas Sri Rupam Sarajatam Sahagana Rabunathan Vitantvam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padana Sahagana Lalita Sri Visakan Vitanscha he Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate <coughs> Vancha Kalpataru Bhyascha Krupa Sindhu Bhyayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaisnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Siddhanta Rasaswati Goswami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvise Shashunyavadi, Paschatya Desha Tarine, Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Garada, Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namachitya Namachitya Kharotam Devim Kataswati Vyasam Tato Jayam Udhiraya Nasta Prayesu Abhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishthiki Hare Krishna everybody, please welcome to our Srimad Bhagavatam class this evening. So I uh, request to everyone, uh, please mute yourself till it will open up for question and answer session. You will have to listen very attentively and sincerely. Uh, today uh, our session will be divided into two sessions. The first half I will try to finish the remaining six incarnations of Lord Krishna. And then uh, other half of this session would be dedicated to our dear Srila Prabhupada from Rajachari of Iskon uh, because it is his appearance day to day. Okay? So with this note, uh, I will begin Srimad Bhagavatam class. Uh, we are working on chapter three of Srimad Bhagavatam Canto one where in the beginning we have seen this uh, material creation by all three Vishnus, we already seen that. Then we have also learned about uh, 16 incarnations so far. The first one is four Chatuskumar, Varahavata, Narad Muni, uh, then this is Nar Narayan, then Kapil Dev, Dattatre, Yagna Dev, King Rusab, Maharaj Purthu, Matsya Avatar, Kurma Avatar, Danvantari and Mohini Avatar, Lord Nasimha, 
and Vamanavatar. And today we're gonna wait a minute. Uh, I'm going for yes, Vamanavatar we did it, Bhrugupati we did it, and today we're gonna start with Vyaste. Vyaste, as we know, the author of Srimad Bhagavatam is also the literary incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna. So it says in the, can you see all the slides here? Uh, Vyasdev uh, is there under the three. Uh, thereafter in the 17th incarnation of God, Sri Vyasdev appeared in the womb of Saraswati through Parasar Muni and he divided the one Veda into several branches and sub branches seeing that the people in general were less intelligent. So he made uh, divisions of Vedas in so many branches so that everybody can take advantage of it because not everybody are with the same intelligence, you know. So I will speak a little bit more about Sila Vyasdev. Vyasdev is also known as Badrayan. Okay, because uh, the ashram where he lives is covered with uh, Badri Vruksha. Okay, so he is known as Krishna Dvaipayana Vyas. Okay, he is Satyavati Suta, Parasariya, Parasuramatmaja, Badarayana, Vyas Dev, like that. He got so many names like that. So he was the son of Mahamuni Parasa in the womb of Satyavati prior to her marriage with Maharaj Santanu, the father of the great general grandfather Bhishmadev. He is a powerful incarnation of Narayan. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So you have to meet yourself and now listen, okay? So this Vyas Devi. Powerful incarnation of Narayan, and he broadcast the Vedic wisdom to the world. Vyasdev is offered respect before one chants the Vedic literature, especially the Puranas. Sukhdev Goswami was his son, as we have seen before also, and receives like Vaisampayana, Jaimini, Atharva, Paila. They were the disciples for different branches of the Vedas. He is the author of the great epic Mahabharata and the great transcendental literature Bhagavatam also, which we are studying now. The Brahma Sutras, the Vedanta Sutras or Bhadarayan Sutras were compiled by him. Among sages, he is the most respected author by dint of severe penances. When he wanted to record the great epic Mahabharata for the welfare of all people in the age of Kali, he was feeling the necessity of a powerful writer who would take up the dictation. By the order of Brahmaji, Sri Ganeshji took up the charge of noting down the dictation on the condition that Vyasdev would not stop dictation for a moment. The Mahabharata was thus compiled by the joint endeavor of Vyasadeva and Ganesh. Now, by the order of his mother Satyavati, who was later married to Maharaj Santanu, and by the request of Bismadev, the eldest son of Maharaj Santanu, by his first wife, the Ganga, he begot three brilliant sons whose names were Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidura. So you know them, this character from the Mahabharata. The Mahabharata was compiled by Vyasdev after the battle of Kurukshetra and after the death of all heroes of Mahabharata. It was first spoken in the royal assembly of Maharaj Janmejai, the son of Maharaj Parikshit. So this is all about Vyasdev. We'll move to the next incarnation, which is Lord Ram, his 18th incarnation. Many people have heard about Ramayana, and many people know about the Ramchandra Bhagwan. He appeared in Treta Yuga. So, 
in the 18th incarnation the lord appearing as ram king ram in order to perform some pleasing work for the demigod he exhibited superhuman powers by controlling the indian ocean and then killing the atheist king ravana who was on the other side of the sea in lanka right so you know about ram also so i'll just give you a brief notes on ram uh that lord ram is son of king dasrath and queen queen kausalya his wife is sita and his brother is lakshman bharat and satrugna he has a faithful servant called hanuman the uh, ramchandra ji uh, always have a bow and arrow with him now reason for coming ramchandra is he appeared as an ideal king the activity that he performed during his incarnation uh, on the day that lord ram was going to be coronated as a king he was banished to the forest by his step mother kai kai who wanted her own son bharat to become king so kai kai wanted her son bharat to be king so uh he requested dasrath or rather ordered dasrath to give a vanvas to ramchandra upon hearing kaikai's request he went with his chaste wife sita devi and younger brother lakshman to reside in the forest now an evil king named ravana heard about the beauty of ram's wife and wanted her for himself so he kidnapped sita with the help of a mystic called maricha who disguised himself as a golden deer i'm sure you must have heard of in ram katha ram and lakshman set off for ravan's kingdom to rescue sita on the way they made alliance with an army of monkeys headed by hanuman ravan lived on the island of lanka and in order to get there lord ram had to cross the ocean so he constructed a bridge over it by throwing into the water mountain peaks which metaphysically floated okay the ram and his army of monkeys soldiers attacked and defeated the soldiers of ravan which made ravan very angry ravan then tried to personally attack lord ram and so lord ramchandra fixed an arrow to his bow aimed at ravan's heart and killed him after giving vibhishan the brother of ravan the power to rule the population of lanka Lord Ramchandra placed Sita Devi on the airplane, decorated with flowers, and returned to Ayodhya. So this is kind of an, a brief history of uh, Lord Rama. Okay, so let's take the next incarnation, which is nineteenth Balram. Here you can see Balram and Krishna both with the cow and a peacock. In this picture, right? So, nineteenth and twentieth incarnation, the Lord advanced Himself uh, as Lord Balram and Lord Krishna in the family of Vrishni, the Yadu dynasty, and by so doing, He removed the burden of the world. So, this way, in this slide, we will try to cover. both lord balram as well as lord ram so about lord krishna we gonna learn uh in whole srimad bhagavatam even balram also so we'll i'll just make a brief notes on balram and krishna okay quickly so uh balram comes directly from the spiritual planet golok vrindavan he is first expansion of lord krishna as we have seen in the beginning of this chapter uh during the discussion of 
uh, creation of material world. And uh, Krishna's older brother, Balram is married to Revati. Now, Balram sometimes holds a plow. He is very expert in fighting with the club. Balram's complexion is white, he's like the moon, and he's very strong. Now, uh, he is son of Rohini and Vasudev. He comes to attract everyone by his wonderful pastime as the brother of Lord Krishna. He performed many wonderful pastimes in Vrindavan with his brother, Lord Krishna. Balram killed demons like Pralamba Sur, Dhanuka Sur, and taught Duryodhan and Bhim how to fight with the club. One, way, one day, Lord Balram became intoxicated by drinking liquor and began uh, wandering about the forest in the company of the gopis. He called out to the Yamuna to come near so he could spot in her water with the gopis. The Yamuna ignored his command. So he started to pull the Yamuna with the end of his plow, splitting her into hundreds of tributaries. The goddess Yamuna was very sorry. She fell down at the Lord Balram's feet and prayed for forgiveness. The Lord forgave her and then entered her waters with his girlfriends to sport for some time. When they rose from the water, the goddess uh, Kantyani presented Lord Balram with beautiful ornaments, clothing and garland. So this is like uh, one brief pastime of Balaram, there are so many which we are going to learn, okay. And I will give little notes about uh, Lord Krishna and then we will take other two incarnations tomorrow because we have to move to the uh, Srila Prabhupada's appearance day uh, festivity. So regarding Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna comes directly from the spiritual planet Golok Vrindavan. He is the source of all incarnation. He appears one time in the day of Brahma, which is called Kalpa. So Lord Krishna always having float, peacock feather, yellow dhoti, his complexion is bluish, like a dark rain cloud. You know. Now he is born as the son of Devki and Vasudeva and is later cared for by his foster mother and father Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj. Krishna comes to attract everyone by his wonderful pastime. He also comes to protect his devotees and kill the demon. So, little bit pastime of Krishna, just one. Krishna played just like a child, parent, Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj, stealing butter and breeding cows. He protected the residents of Vrindavan by killing many terrible demons sent by his uncle, Kausa. He shattered, oh, he sheltered the residents of Vrindavan from the devastating rain sent by Lord Indra by lifting over the hill. Krishna performed many long pastimes with the young covered maidens of Vraj, especially Srimati Radharani. He spoke Bhagavad Gita to his close friend Arjuna on the battle of, battlefield of Kurukshetra. He also arranged for his dynasty to be destroyed by a family. So this is a brief note on Krishna. Now two remaining incarnations about Lord Buddha and Kalki Avatar. We'll uh, look at that tomorrow. But now we'll turn to our presentation on uh, Prabhupada's uh, celebrations of his appearance day. Okay, so please bear with me. I'm gonna change the uh, slide. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Prabhupada slide. Oh.
Abaji, I cannot see the slide. I can cannot see your screen. Okay, now you can see it? No, Abaji. Can you see the screen? Okay. So now we're going to talk about Srila Prabhupada because today is very auspicious day of his appearance. Okay. All right. So uh, I don't know what is happening here. Uh, Prabhuji, I cannot see your screen. Okay, one second. Prabhuji, I cannot see your screen. Okay, one second. Okay, you got it now? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes. Okay, everybody can yes, see it now. Prabhuji. Okay, so let's uh, pray for humble obeisances to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvisesha Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshatarine, Jai Shila Prabhupada. So, on this very auspicious day, uh, we would like to humbly offer our obeisances to His Divine Grace Srila Abhay Charanavinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. You know, we are indebted to Srila Prabhupada forever. You know, His worldwide preaching is just miraculous. You know, He took a risk to come to USA to fulfill the order of His Guru and to fulfill the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, we will try to see in this slide so uh, about Srila Prabhupada. So the first one here he says, who is Srila Prabhupada? So Srila Prabhupada, known as his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, appeared in this world in Calcutta, India, on the Nand Mahotsav. Today is also called Nand Mahotsav because next day, the Krishna born during the night, midnight. So from midnight to early morning uh, would be the process of transferring of Krishna from the prison of our Kamsa to the Gokul and bringing from Gokul the Yogmaya baby to the prison house again, like that. So in the morning, uh, Gokul, Vrajavasi, when they knew uh, that uh, Nanava have a son, uh, they celebrated Nandutsav. So today, Nandutsav and also the appearance of Srila Prabhupada. So this is like annual festival day celebrating Krishna's birth in the year of 1896. His father uh, was a pure devotee of Lord Krishna who would always invite holy men to his house for meals and ask them to bless his son to become a great devotee of Radharani, Lord Krishna's most beloved devotee. Oh, wow. Srila Prabhupada's father once bought him a small cart to pull the deity of Lord Jagannath, as they do during the great Rathyatra festival in Jagannath Puri. So even as a child, Srila Prabhupada would organize little festival centered around Krishna in his neighborhood. And you can see that Prabhupada, when he came to Western world, he also introduced this uh, Jagannath Alakshra festival. So it is being celebrated uh, uh, in most of the cities in uh, USA and everywhere else also. But uh, time like this pandemic situation, they are not able to celebrate this year, but normally every year they do celebrate that thing. So here, um, more about Prabhupada, that Prabhupada after attended Scottish church school in, I mean, college in Calcutta, which was administered by British. Now later he joined Gandhi's non-cooperation movement and refused to accept diploma from that college as a type of protest. Although he had actually completed all the requirements for the degree. After this, a friend of his father, Dr. Bose, made him a manager of his chemical company. Thereafter, 
in 1918 prabhupad came uh, sorry uh, in 1918 prabhupad became married and soon started a family life so he first met his spiritual master shila bhakti siddhant saraswati goswami in calcutta in 1922 so at that time he was 26 years old you can see so bhakti siddhant saraswati a prominent religious scholar and the founder of 64 gaudiya mathas gaudiya matha is another way you can name it vedic institutes like this educated young man and convinced him to dedicate his life to teaching vedic knowledge so you can see that in the very first meeting you know uh with uh his uh, uh spiritual master bhakti siddhant saraswati goswami maharaj he was not initially at that, that time but he ordered him you know to preach this bhagavad dharma vedic knowledge to the western countries you know so then after shila prabhupad became his student and 11 years later in 1933 so he first met in 1922 and then in 1933 uh, he took initiation at allahabad and became his formally initiated disciple now at their first meeting in 22 as we discussed shila bhakti siddhan saraswati requested shila prabhupad to broadcast vedic knowledge through the english language now in the years that followed shila prabhupad wrote a commentary on the bhagavad gita and in 1944 okay another 11 years after his initiation okay he started back to godhead magazine in english back to godhead is never stopped yeah and it never stopped right so sorry once began the magazine never stopped it is now being continued by his disciple in the west and is published in over 30 languages recognizing prabhupad's philosophical learning and devotion the gaudiya vaishnava society honored him in 1947 with the title bhakti vedanta shila prabhupada like bhakti vedanta then on the order of his spiritual master his divine grace ac bhakti vedant swami prabhupad began translating and writing vedic literature in the english language to bring the message of lord krishna to the western countries in 1950 at the age of 54 shil prabhupad retired from his married life adopting the one prastha means retired life in order to devote more time to his studies and writing shila prabhupad traveled to the holy city of vrindavan where he lived in very humble circumstances in the historic medieval temple of radha damodar sri vrindavan there he engaged for several years in deep study and writing so there are so many uh, past times of shila prabhupad at radha damodar temple in his lilamrut he accepted the renounced order of life which is sanyas in 1959 uh, at radha damodar shila prabhupad began work on his life's masterpiece a multi volume annotated translation of the 18000 verses shrimad bhagavatam which we are learning shrimad bhagavatam he also wrote easy journey to other planets so this is what he wrote during that time then this is the big uh, risk the prophet is taking we can see here after publishing three volumes of bhagavatam shila prabhupad came to usa in september 1965 to fulfill the mission of his spiritual master as well as you can say chaitanya mahaprabhu also because chaitanya mahaprabhu predicted that 
because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than Krishna, and he predicted that someone will come and uh, uh, they will uh, sing the glories of my name or they will uh, preach the name of Krishna uh, in the western countries and each every town and village like that. So subsequently his divine grace wrote more than 60 volume of authoritative annotated translations and summary studies of the philosophical religious classics of India. When he first arrived by freighter, he came to the uh, here uh, Jaladuta, which was like a cargo ship. So Srila Prabhupada was practically penniless. He doesn't have any money with him. So only after almost a year of great difficulty, uh, the, he established the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in July of 1966. So probably less than a year, you can say that. He arrived in USA September 1965 and he established this Society of International Society of Krishna Consciousness also known as ISKCON in July of 1966. Thereafter, he continued to distribute the spiritual knowledge and the process of singing and chanting Hare Krishna all over the world. He traveled around the world 12 times and visited every major country to take Bhakti Yoga and Harinam Sankirtan to the Western He had, sorry, he gave thousands of lectures, wrote thousands of letters, and met with many important scholars and dignitaries who very much appreciated his effort. Therefore, it was Srila Prabhupada who had been predicted by the previous Acharyas and by Sri Chaitanya and even by Lord Krishna in the Indian Puranas as the person who would spread this new spirit. Now, here, before his passing away on November 14, 1967, please, you have to mute yourself. Hare Krishna. Please listen attentively and carefully. Hari Bol. Before his passing away on Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please try to control the noise on your side. Before his passing away on November 14, 1977, he guided the society and saw it grow to a worldwide concentration of more than 100 ashrams, schools, temples, institutes, and farm communities. Yeah, Prabhupada also inspired the construction of several large international cultural centers in India. The center at Sridham Mayapur in Bengal is the site for a planned spiritual city, an ambitious project for which construction will extend over many years to come. You can see there is Vedic planetarium. Uh, the model is given here, uh, which will open in few years. Okay. Here in Vrindavan, India, Hare Krishna, please stop this noise from your side. Hare Bol. Can you, can somebody can take care of that noise? Hare Bol. Hare Bol. Hare Bol. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I have muted all the participants. If you can please unmute yourself.
Oh, okay, Madari. Thank you. All right. So, she'll, okay, in Vrindavan, India, is the magnificent Krishna Balram temple with an international guest house. And the Srila Prabhupada Memorial and Museum is also there. Srila Prabhupada's most significant contribution, however, is his books. Very good. Highly respected by the academic community for their authority, depth, and clarity. They are used as standard textbook in numerous college courses. His writing have been translated into over 50 languages. Next, uh, about Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. The Bhaktivedanta Book Trust established in 1972 to publish the works of His Divine Grace has thus become the world's largest publisher of books in the field of Indian religion and philosophy. In just 12 years, in spite of his advanced age, Srila Prabhupada circled the globe 14 times on lecture tours that took him six continents. In spite of such vigorous schedule, Srila Prabhupada continued to write prolifically. His writings constitute a veritable library of Vedic philosophy, religion, literature, and culture. He wrote 51 volumes of books with translations in 28 languages, especially Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, so anyone can take advantage of this knowledge. So, here is Shila Prabhupada, he established the summary life. I don't know, eight temples in most major cities around the world and touch so many people who can also teach his philosophy uh, that this genuine spiritual knowledge as predicted in the ancient Quranic literature will continue to spread and be available for at least the next 10,000 years. So this was uh, one thing that also uh, we can see the Srila Prabhupada, the greatest contribution is his books. So I would like to say something about uh, his uh, books that he has written and what he said about it. So during his preaching, Srila Prabhupada used to write letters to his disciples, you know. And in one of them, he wrote about Krishna book. Okay. He said that this book production is most pro important and you have pleased me very much. Just go on, flood the whole world with this Krishna books. So that was, Prabhupada was so enthusiastic. Prabhupada got innumerable qualities, but to name a few, uh, he has a firm determination. He was uh, courageous, tolerance. You know, uh, we can see from his uh, Lilamrut that how much he tolerated when he came to this Western world because the Western disciple that he had, they are not so much familiar with our culture and Vedic tradition. So uh, when they used to come to listen to Prabhupada, they were not in a, you know, kind of an attitude towards helping Prabhupada in, in an initial stage, you know, later on they helped the Lord. But uh, in initial stage, Prabhupada has to cook for them, Prabhupada has to clean the utensils, you know, for them and everything, you know. So you can see that uh, the tolerance that Prabhupada has, you know, uh, because he wanted to preach them this Bhagavad Dharma. He got a great enthusiasm. Uh, the and the most important quality is that he has his faith in Guru and Krishna, you know. So, uh, in another place, uh, it says that the instructions given in his books is supposed to be personal instruction. He said, when we read the Bhagavad Gita as it is, it is understood that we are receiving personal instructions of Krishna, you know. Uh, 
there is no uh, physical barrier is there in case of spiritual affairs. Now, Srila Prabhupada's books are not really books at all, at least not in ordinary sense. His books are not simply pieces of paper with ink on them. His books are mercy incarnation. Remember, this is a very nice statement. His books are mercy incarnation of Krishna in literary form, along with his pure devotee, Srila. Otherwise, how could uh, you know, these books can change the heart of so many people, you know, uh, around the world. No books can penetrate the hearts of so many people as Srila Prabhupada's books, you know. Srila Prabhupada's books have unparalleled potency. They are supremely authoritative. And Srila Prabhupada says that everything you need to know to become fully Krishna consciousness is in my books. So whoever, you know, reads proper books uh, in the morning and in the evening, you know, uh, in general, he suggested his disciple to read Krishna book at night because all these Krishna stories, pastimes, and it is so pure that it will purify us, you know. So he told all his disciples to read before they go to bed, they have to read Krishna book, you know, and then maybe hot milk, you know. They get a hot milk with sugar, they get intoxicated, they get nice sleep. In the morning, they are ready for Mangala. Like this. And you can see that Prabhupada has introduced this Mangala Arati program in each and every temple, uh, where, you know, devotee wakes up at 4.30, do the Mangala Arati, nursing a prayer, Tulsi Arati, you know, and then the chanting is going on, and then the uh, to honor Srila Prabhupada, the Prabhupada's Arti is there, and then Bhagavatam class and Prasadam. Very nice. If anybody follows this full morning program, you know, in the morning, and also uh, chant 16 down and follow four regular to principle, he will definitely go back to Godhead. That's Prabhupada's promise, you know. So, another thing, in his books, uh, in every line, every word, Srila Prabhupada is uh, urging us to surrender to Krishna. Moreover, on every uh, reading, we get fresh inspiration. This is very nice. I uh, experienced that thing also by reading Prabhupada books, that every time you read, see the Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam is not like a novel book. You know, they are not like the literature which you read one time and then throw it away. It's not like that. You read it again and again, and every time you get new inspiration, you know. Uh, because the Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada purport was so nice that Prabhupada used to say, my purports are my ecstasies, you know. Uh, there is no author that they have read their books normally. Srila Prabhupada used to read his books, you know. So you can see that this is all dictated by Krishna, you know, because he was so dear to Lord Krishna, you know. Uh, so in that case, uh, among other place, uh, Prabhupada says that our first business is this book distribution. There is no need of any other business. If this book distribution is managed properly, pushed on with great enthusiasm and determination, and at the same time, if our men keep spiritually strong, then the whole world will become Krishna consciousness. You know, So this was the Prabhupada's uh, uh, blessings to us, you know. And such a pure devotee is very rare to uh, see and experience in this time of uh, Kali Yuga, you know, in this material world. So actually, Srila Prabhupada, uh, regarding, I will just put a last note to Srila Prabhupada by reciting one verse, which Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Sanatan Goswami, uh, and I will explain that. Aksano phalam tvadrus darsanam hi Tano phalam tvadrus gatra sangaha Jihva phalam tvadrus kirtanam hi Sudur lava bhagavata hi loke Which means to see a pure devotee Vaishnava like Srila Prabhupada is the perfection of our eyes. Of course, we are not so fortunate to see him, but those 
who have seen him, they are very, very fortunate. Uh, the second thing says in this verse is, to touch his lotus feet is the perfection of our sense of touch. You know? And the third thing is to glorify his qualities is the perfection of our tongue, which we are doing today. We are glorifying Prabhupada on his appearance day. And that is what we should do. You know, we should glorify our acharyas on his appearance and disappearance day. You know, because that gives us a chance to express our feelings of gratitude towards them. And whatever they have contributed for this world, we can meditate on it. And then we can also try to make our life sublime. You know. So uh, with this note, uh, I think so many things can be said about Srila Prabhupada. But uh, we have a time limit. Uh, we have to honor the time. Kala Chakra is always moving. You know. So now we'll open up the session for question and answers. Hare Krishna and thank you everyone. Shlok, you can ask a question. Yes. Um. So. Um. So that um. Wait. Um. Is that person? Is that person who the one who made this uh this this um Bhagavad Gita as it is book? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. You're welcome. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Vinika, you can ask a question now. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. I have a question. My first question is that God of Hiranyakashipu, why didn't Hiranyakashipu ask Lord Shiva to give him the boon? Because Lord Shiva gets easily pleased by a little penance. No, Hiranyakasipu got boon by Lord Brahma, not by Lord Shiva. I mean, like, why? Why didn't he take it from Lord Shiva? Oh. He, uh -huh. like, Lord Shiva gives boons very easily. Anybody also, right? He was like, yeah. Uh, so why he chose Lord Brahma, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Maybe... That was so early time. Uh, I don't. Let's see when uh, Lord Shiva appeared from Brahma, because in the beginning, Varahatar was there. Uh, I don't know why he chose Lord Brahma over Lord Shiva for asking his boon. Maybe I'll have to research something about it. And my second question is that why did Parshuram want to kill the Kshatriyas? Why Parshuram? Why did Parshuram want to kill the Kshatriyas? Oh, okay. Because uh, his father was killed by Kshatriya king. You know, the Kartvetya Arjun. That was, that's why he was angry. And he decided and that was his also one of the function, one of the activity of his incarnation. Each and every incarnation of, of, of the Bhagavan, Lord Krishna has specific uh, activity to perform, you know, and that was his activity. And my last question is that when was Leela Amrita written? When was Leela? Yeah, okay. It was written after the Prabhupada uh, passing away. Uh, when Prabhupada left his body in November 14, 1970, afterwards, his disciple, one of his disciples, very prominent, uh, Satsvarup Das Goswami, he wrote that. Lilamru. Prabhupada.